vacuum shenanigan. Yeah, I think maybe. All right. What if when you use curveball and you hit someone, it kind of drags the person towards the angle that the the orb came? You know what I mean? So it's kind of like bending time, and you suck the person, kind of like what Shockwave does in a way. So you just drag everyone that gets hit closer towards the curve. Okay, I can I can yeah. see that being pretty okay. Uh, like it adds in a, a slow or something. Um, yeah, yeah, maybe like a zero point two something. You know, uh, I I would have liked something else because honestly, I, I I'm not sure what what it's supposed to do, right? Because a uh, puck is all about like. The, the whole Disruption. coil breakage thing. So Jostling Rift in a way pushes people, so this could drag people and maybe it, it would make sense, you know? I mean, there's just a lot of heroes that have absolutely, like one facet really good, the other one's absolutely terrible. Um, but then yeah. there are some heroes that are interesting, like the Monkey King, he went for the tree dance facet, which I've seen that one being picked more because with the no cooldown uh, when he's above 95% health for the extra movement speed, but the other one's also really good, especially if you're up against like Muerta and Tusk uh, and whatnot. Yeah, exactly. And even if you die and the Wukong stays for three seconds longer, has so much value. So many kills happen after you die. I feel like Siemens Strike got nerfed real hard, right? 95% is it's no joke. So I think it used to be 80 at some point, and then it became 90 and now it's 95. Uh, I, yeah, I, I feel like this game could have been better with the other one but this basically tells us that he he wants to be super active he wants to be uh moving from mid to the side lanes and just creating havoc which they definitely can like their heroes scale but they're also very active yeah and looking at these two drafts though the big question for you um who do you who you do you actually prefer here like you said beast ghost but is it their heroes or is it their players? Uh, I would say draft wise, I think it's pretty even. Uh, I would give just a slight edge to Beast Coast, but I also feel like their players are slightly better. Uh, maybe you know, maybe if you're like comparing like role by role, it's not that big of a difference. But as a team, I definitely feel like Beast Coast is uh, an oiled machine, whereas Corey, uh, maybe. Maybe they need a little bit of uh, a couple of games here to actually work together because I'm sure some of these players have played together in the past, but they're they're not really you know they're kind of a stack right now. I mean, to be fair, everyone in South America has played with each other in the team at one point. Right? Yeah, <laughs> I, it, this entire Beast Coast roster was in a different lineup, and the the previous Beast like I've seen every safe laner I think in Beast Coast so far. Uh, come together. A uh, bit of a brawl here from the supports in mid between Gardic Genic, uh, Moose, and El Misha. Not really okay. for a reason. Oh, TP interrupted there by El Misha. Mm -hmm. And the set, other TP does not get interrupted, but now Gardic's going to be forced to walk towards the gateway and take the TP there. Okay, unfortunate. Um, yeah, I was just going to say that Wonder Kid. Do, do you know the story of this guy? The guy that lost uh, his finger? Wait, he lost his finger? Yeah, he had a big accident. He lost like a part of two fingers and he... He, he had a different nickname. Um, I probably just won't hit up. But he had a different nickname. He came back now as Wonder Kid after some surgery and like a lot of rehabilitation. Uh, there was a whole... Uh, go fund me or something for him and now he is looking sharp again like he was i think he was ranked two when that happened like he was starting to get known and then that had happened like that i think he lost like maybe a year and a half of a pretty promising career as vitaly very low but it is image that gets first blood i mean that's impressive uh if you actually lose a finger and manage to still like I can't see his rank here. I'm going to quickly have to check. What's his yeah, rank? He's here? ranked 200 in Europe right now. Okay. I mean, that's not Which bad. is probably ranked 2 NA. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah, but that's because there's no one in NA. 
Yeah, that's true. There's a lot of Brazilians in the top 50 now, because no one plays that server anymore. Yeah, they'll. I mean, I the amount of Brazilians and Peruvians I encounter in my pubs is shocking. Yeah, I mean, literally, <laughs> if you have any interest to go pro, I mean, you're not playing with the pros, but basically everyone is uh, is trying to to play European servers now. Doesn't really make sense to play any. Oh, it's only win traders and <laughs> just a lot of griefing. I mean, that also happens in the EU, don't worry. <laughs> oh, he used to be called Lala Truni. Lala who? Lala Truni. I'll Lala the... Truni. Okay, yeah, that's uh, something I need to read so that... Yeah, I sent you. Uh, there was a whole thing, like there was a Reddit post and... Uh, by the way, did you see... Uh, oh, Lala Truni, okay. Uh, interesting, I, I've... Never seen that nickname before. Um, the more you know. Did you see, by the way, there was a post on Reddit about uh, this patch is going because the next bit, uh, you know, numbered patch is going to be after probably the new year. Um, mm -hmm. In one month, this is going to be the longest number patch in Dota history. So, new record being broken. Crazy, right? I feel like. Uh, you know, a lot of people talk about uh, Ice Frog being involved with Roger Kill. Yeah, a kill bottom lane. Vitaly gets taken down by Pike. And uh, I did also see something that you, I think it was you that posted it about Deadlock getting stuck inside the um, inside of the teleporter at the start of the yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I also did had that. Them? And then you have to ah. do the command kill me, which is so dumb. <laughs> Yeah, I, I literally, I was like, I couldn't leave and I quit the game and then I couldn't play for 40 minutes and then my behavior score maybe suffered. Uh, I hope, you know, it wasn't that big of a deal. But yeah, my theory is that because Ice Frog is busy with that lock, I think he's only showing up for big patches and he's not doing the normal uh, patch. So I think because that's a big one, he's gonna come back and that's when they're gonna have maybe you know a new mechanic or just some facet changes in general. Now he's just making Dota into a 3D game. <laughs> now we got our own version of Smite. Maybe just merge that lock and Dota. Uh, someone already did it in the. Have you seen the arcade game? Then merge just both, both of them. Mm, no, that sounds pretty really? cool. Yeah, like the, the Deadlock heroes actually kind of have a 3D sort of thing, and the Dota heroes just play normal Dota. It's it's really weird. Hmm. Impressive. Um, but Moose gets a solo kill onto Gen. Yeah, it's uh, not fun for a hero. That, like, if you don't get your TP off in time, you slowly melt. Uh, speaking of which, currently Beast Coast are winning all three lanes and yes they are they're just a really good team i was actually surprised when they qualified for ti that's no flame to them but their previous roster was just so freaking good yeah oh, uh, the kid. snapped and dead yeah all right beast calls not playing around here I, I really like, you know, Lumpy and Pike to me, uh, like, they've been together for so long, they played in Lava, they played so many stacks and they kept on changing, but always keeping uh, that core roster together. And they really came a long way. Like, I feel like they, they make this Beast Coast lineup what it is, alongside Moose. I think before Moose, they were, they felt a little bit lost in the sense of, like, map movements and uh, captainship. And I think he was really the solution to that aspect of the game. Yeah, I I would concur. I mean, that's the beauty about SA. They just have a lot of pros and a lot of, you know, stories and experience behind them and different rosters and whatnot, um, which not every region has, right? NA just, mm -hmm. they've got a couple. Like, you got Apex Genesis, that's probably the only actual na team um i mean nouns used to be no no not more anymore and obviously the uh shopify is everything from everywhere yeah 
It's uh, yeah, I guess it's one international team as Gardic. He actually gets the steal. Oh, that's a nice one. Double XP rune is very huge here. To make sure that that line doesn't get his level 6 quickly or the very pesky Batrider for the lasso. Gardic's trying to get the suicide onto the Ancients, but uh, Lumpy will at least be able to secure that kill. But yeah, even though they did so well, the double experience rune loss is... Uh, that one's gonna hurt. Yeah, it's oh. an interesting situation, right? Because you have the experience lead for the supports uh, on Hotori. Oh. Uh, Illich, well, if you can use, move him in from behind, but with the rest of the team TPing in, people on the one to do the flip, and the damage is not going to be behind, I can do it, but still the MNR, one to kid will be able to get the game, but I can't call them, he's actually dropping low, low, quite trying to stay alive, alive. If inside, inside the door, and the jelly walks into his death, and then they will even find guard, guard, a 3, 4, 2, what a trade, what a early fight, this is what we didn't see in the last series, there were no big fat early engagements, this is SA Dota. Huge rotation from Mike. Uh, they already have a freaking defusal blade on Illich, man. That, that's coming from all that lead. And sure, you have the experience advantage on the support of Corey, but the cores on Beast Coast are ready to fight already. Yeah, they're, uh, they're looking active. They, they know that this game, you know, if you play this game late, Gyrocopter is going to be a pain. It's going to be rough. Yes, they have uh, answers for the storm, but you don't really have that many great answers for this uh, gyrocopter. Even the Muerta can scale up in the late game as well. So you're probably looking to win this game. What, 25 minutes? Yeah, 25, 30 minutes for sure. And that's the thing with the same thing, right? I feel like the biggest problem, the what really allows Viscos to win all of these fights is that if you click on Sand King, he has three points of Sandstorm, so he's glorified three. He doesn't really do anything. Yes, he has his own Yes, he can burrow strike, but all right, that's kind of a Italy, forced fight. Dream coil catch. He will lose his life. The puck chases him for more. Godic's gonna get stunned up. They lose Pike. That's a big kill. Okay. There's one to kid this time. There's no dream coil to hold him in place. Drag back Lumpy, and that is gonna be a big fight. Continuing one to kid though. The rolling thunder. Are they gonna get more? Gardic has no spells left. He's gonna try and man fight up against Moose, but the swashbuckle of Illich will be the end of him. Illich, however, chased by Lumiere, eats up some mangoes. There's the zipman from Wonderkid. No mana left on Wonderkid, but there's also no more response. The only one surviving on the side of Beast Ghost are the two supports. That is a very painful fight for Beast Ghost. They force that fight way too much. They dove a tier one when the Sand King has Sandstorm invisibility. And uh, that, that was too much. Way too much. And Beast Ghost surprisingly don't actually lose that for a flea by uh by that play and maybe they can even do wonder kid no point at all yeah wonder kid going for the orchid build puck going for the witch blade obviously because parasma later with the shard is nuts and that's also one of the things that i love about puck the fact that it can't it, like it turns puck used to be terrible late game and now yeah. it's just that extra right-click core with that Aghanim Scepter shard build. Yeah, I think they balance that out, right? He's not as strong early game as he used to. I mean, he's still pretty strong, but now he scales so much more. Uh, and I think that was that's a good balance. Some people would say that, oh no, I want this hero to be very only strong early and really bad late. But I think this just makes the heroes more viable in general, right? Having more smooth power curves. A little bit more uh, flexibility in that regard. You know, you also have the. Uh, that's why Voker gets banned the entire time, because Voker now has that yeah. right click build uh, built in to make sure that he also is solid in late game. Rolling Defense Thunder comes the power. out. Here they have Glyph. Lumiere gets stunned up the ones. Gardic is ready for a snowball save if need be. Ice shards to block the uh, retreat. Lumiere over. Is Dream coiled up, losing a lot of HP. Epicenter on the side. They will lose El Misha, but Lumiere is a bigger target to take down. Lumpy targeted by Wonder Kid, but nice dodge there with the phase shift. Zip in on the side. Moose has a lasso, but can he even get the cost off? He's trying to. No. Wonder Kid does too much damage. The chasing in deeper. The snowball goes very deep behind enemy lines. Guarding surrounded. He made a little bit of an oopsie daisy because the rest of his team is not going to chase with him. And that will be another team fight. 
coming through and uh, two for two trade but this time it is the gyrocopter dying first which really hurts their chances yeah but surprisingly the gold lead went down i guess the stack that hokori far farmed was a lot of money they also did get the tower even though they let's say lost that fight when you consider the heroes that actually died from hokori uh very back in the fourth game, it, it looked like it was all Beast Coast in the first five, six minutes, but I really feel like Wonder Kid has stepped up uh, his game here. Five and one, despite the fact that he lost the lane and even died in the first fights. Yeah, he's got nine galvanized stacks, and those stack up pretty neatly to get that big mana region uh, in the late game. So you, yeah, he loves points, those yeah. early game engagements. Though, keep fighting, keep fighting, give me stacks. But if he dies, uh, though... Un unless he gets caught, and then don't fight. Don't stop fighting, guys. I, I don't Congrats, know why DK. you want to keep fighting. I mean, I just have Jinx to curse... Out of that man. I have to cast this curse everything I see. Otherwise, this is going to be very boring. Okay. Well, this does make sense. This game is quite entertaining, so keep doing your thing. Uh, Vitaly did finish his Blink Dagger. And now he's going to be working towards that Bloodstone. What kind of build do you like on, uh, like, Sanking? Do you like the Bloodstone build or more aura-oriented? Uh, I'll be honest, I'm not that big of a fan of Bloodstone, if I can be honest. Uh, I only like it when a team needs to play the fights statically. And when I look at Beast Coast, I think it's quite the opposite, right? You have Batrider, Pango, Puck, Monkey King. Lion is the only static hero that they have. I guess Monkey King is static once he ults. But, yeah, I feel like you can ignore the Bloodstone, especially when you're playing with uh, Centroud. So that's why, in general, I, I like the other facet a bit more, because every Sand King wants to go Bloodstone, and I feel like it just synergizes better at the other one. I can understand you can that. Move, right? You it, can it's true, but system. when you get Bloodstone, you, like the range of Sandstorm is ridiculous with this facet. It, it covers your entire screen uh, essentially. No, it's it's bigger on the other facet. It's like five fifth is. Oh no, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. Well, Sandstorm is eight hundred with this facet. Uh, with the Sandstorm facet, uh, Sandstorm okay. it's actually bigger. True, like true, it's true. already almost your entire screen. Add in the bloodstone range, and then it like your invis all over the place, which is kind mm -hmm. of why it's a neat one in both situations. Because in the other one, it just kind of reverts it back to before it was nerfed. Yeah, yeah I think yeah, slightly yeah. bigger, but yeah, it's five fifty. I think. Definitely. Yeah, and this one eight hundred. There's gonna be a zip in quickly catching moves. Two kills there for Hokori, and I mean they're finding good kills. Uh, however, these ghosts have uh, essentially just backed off. I find this one interesting. Pike safe lane Monkey King, first item Mage Slayer. Yeah, it's all magic damage, right? Besides the, the Gyrocopter, it is all magic. Uh, I do like that a lot. Just applying the Mage Slayer. I feel like Pike is like the opposite of the normal SA carry. Oh, wait a second here. They find a Pangle. There are a lot of pickups here that they're finding. Pike is very much a European carry in the sense of being active, in the sense of building what's better for the game, not only farming, uh, which is quite refreshing, you know? I think it's cool to see SA having more versatility in how they play the game. Because, you know, the, the, the school of the Parkers and Pakas has been pretty dominant. Yeah, Especially in my 100%. Club, with those the Pega carries that uh, literally farm until the game's over. Yeah, the four protect one carries, you know, the SA's got quite a decent amount of them, but not the Duraccios, the Mickeys, the I will sacrifice yeah. my game to make sure we win kind of a carries. They don't have too many of those in SA. Yeah, they really don't. And like, it's not like they're bad carries, like, and they, that they sacrifice themselves all the time, but if they need to, they definitely will. Like, they will get yeah. a, a more unorthodox item, like the Maze Layer. You will and, not have uh, Parker yeah. play a, a, a uh, safe lane bat rider for him. Well, I think he actually did once. I think he actually did do that. <laughs> okay, N not a safe lane Mars. I don't think he will build my base layer monkey king. So that's yeah, no, that's what I was saying. That would be an Aghanim scepter right there, and second item like BKB, but probably Ags. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, Wonder Kid did finish that Orchid, so the pot now needs to work. Oh, he already has a new scepter. Never mind. Lumpy is also very farmed. Yeah, Sanking is uh, closing in on towards his Bloodstone. Pushing towers is a big problem for Beast Coast, uh, just because the Sand King is always going to be. Oh, Lumiere is half you. HP. Is going to get jumped here. Rolling Thunder comes through, and yeah, he was at like 30% HP farming the enemy side of the map. That's not a good position to be in. Jenik pops his ulti, trying to go for the TP away. They have the use. And they will interrupt his disengage while Gardic, in the meantime, does lose his life to Moose. Who kills him without a lasso even required. Three kills there for Beast Ghost. And the courier actually oh, dies of Vitaly. That's a big one. That's a big one. I'm not sure what happened. As you said, he was really low. I guess they were baiting, but maybe they didn't expect that many heroes to engage. And then the storm kind of gave up on helping. He was behind the whole time. Oh, they fight the bug. And they kill off the puck. Lumpy Dream Call in response is going to use himself up, try to stay alive, disengage. And there's a two man catch. Oh. Nice bounder strike from Pike. And they take down Vitaly as well. That's where the Mage Slayer comes in big against the Sandstorm. Epicenter shenanigans. So much damage reduction coming into play. So active on Pike. Showing up again. Making sure that they get killed, that they don't lose Lumpy. And I mean, this is. This is swinging so much. It was like a 3k gold uh, lead for Beast Coals, then it became a 1k gold lead for Hokori, and we're back to 5k in like one and a half minutes. And we're still not done just yet, but a 4 or 5k net worth lead gets a little bit uh, problematic. Lumiere is done with his Aghanim Scepter now, Mike. and he, he needs that BKB soon. Gardic's going to be the one that at least tanks the gank so that the uh, Lumiere doesn't die. Like, the Gyrocopter has not had any, except for that fight in mid, hasn't really had any in favorable engagements here. Yeah, and I really feel like this Sand King is such a big, uh, heavy weight for Okori, because, like, he's not playing in this lane where all the aggression of Beast Coast is, right, and you're just trying to defend the tower. He's farming, like, the safest farm on the top side. Wonder Kid did join him now. But I, I don't know. I, I know that Vitaly got a hard game and he's trying to recover, but I can't help but feel like the Sand King hasn't really uh, given them that much. But it also drained so many resources in the process as Pike. Oh, Wonder Kid on the run. El Misho doesn't have a blink, but the bat does. So you got to be careful. Moose has blink lasso at the ready. Okay. Looks like the monkey is going for an orchid at the moment. Jason, Dream Coil onto Vitaly. There's going to be the root and the silence onto Pike. But Vitaly is stuck. How can he get his burrow off? The silence lasts a little bit too long. Yules in the sky. Taken down below. Lumpy gets a dominating streak going. Yeah, Vitaly right. is uh, struggling right now. Really needs that bloodstone to even survive in these fights. This is the play style I've seen Beast Coast uh, play their best. Like, very active, very in your face the whole time, not a lot of farming, very European. Like, uh, unlike pretty much every other SA team, I feel like they are the, the ones that do this the best. So, it's nice to have different play styles. I really want to see how it's going to look like if they end up facing Heroic at some point in this tournament, which I feel like it's kind of inevitable. It's definitely a very good possibility, you know, lower bracket finals, upper bracket finals, finals. That, that these teams should, those teams should definitely face each other because you expect Hero to be in the finals, right? That's yeah. undisputed okay. SA champion pretty much at the moment. If they, you know, sure they had their hiccups and, and but don't kill each like... other. <laughs> yeah, let's hope that doesn't happen. It is possible though, after uh, some of those incidents. But, you know, they, they had time to rest. I actually did visit their gaming house in Hamburg. Uh, played some... In the gaming house in Hamburg? Um, I mean, the, the boot camp, right? They, they had a, a gaming okay. place that was equipped, and it was a house. Uh, I met with their content creator guy. Really cool. We played, what's the name of uh, Fake Hitler something? Uh, Hitler what? something, the board game? Oh, um, yeah, I know what boy, like, when you said, okay, and, yeah, um, I, I've 
I know what game you're talking about. I haven't played it. Um, yeah, so I played with them. It was really fun. Half is secret, very Secret good. Hitler. It's Secret, secret Hitler. Hitler. Awesome. Yes, exactly. Caps is really good. Just uh, never trust that guy. It's crazy. How's the language barrier? Uh, it was fine because uh, I mean the the people with language barrier actually didn't play. Uh, the whole time Mr. Parker was streaming and just yelling. Uh, and I think Davai didn't want to play, so he was just pubbing as well. And then it was really just divine. Brazilians. Yeah, uh, it was the Brazilians, Washi, the content creator guy, and myself, and we're all speaking English for the most part. Okay, that's a bit disappointing, yeah. Davai. <laughs> he was spotting, right? Uh, he was he was grinding that 14k. Oh well. Um, currently, they have slowed down significantly this game. Vitaly's got the Bloodstone done. BKB next for very obvious reasons. Gyrocop just closing in on his BKB as well. So they're trying to... Get, Storm has his BKB done. That's kind of... When they get the BKBs, they, they want to take a fight. Until that... You know, it's too scary against this Lockdown. Even with the BKB, you still have to deal with Lasso, which is always a little bit of a pain. Um, but that's the only real moment you can fight. This monkey, by the way, look at his build. Mage Slayer, BKB, Shard, Orchid. That's a very yeah. strange safe lane monkey build. And he's still third I in that board. Huge. And you know what's the cutest thing about this? Uh, uh, sure, like, our Corrosion is okay on Monkey King. Uh, I wouldn't say it's, like, super popular, but it's fine. But that heal reduction, I feel like it's going to keep this Arm of Corrosion for a while. Because it's very good against the Bloodstone of Vitali. Uh, they don't really have any Shivas or Skyrim on the way so far. And just having that heal region reduction could be the difference maker in some fights, which will actually oh. start now. El Misho, Lion's going to get caught. They tried to connect onto Pike as well as the secondary. One gets out of mana. Dream Cold comes out of the three. He has the BKB. There's oh, going to be the Wukong's command, and it is used. They control up fight, and he can't even pop the Bloodstone there. No the mana of passing is Epi, and they're trying to disengage. If they only lose one, that would be great. In response to Silence onto the puck, he's losing his life. He uses himself up just in the nick of time, but Lumiere, can he take deal the damage enough to kill off Lumpy? He's jumping away. And Wonderkid doesn't have the mana to chase. They lose Illich. And with that gigantic BK, uh, Dream Coil plus Wukongs, they only find the Sand King. Who could have actually yeah, survived, they... in, all, in all honesty. But, you know, he went for the Epicenter into Bloodstone instead of Bloodstone into Epicenter. So, no. Yeah, that, that is definitely true. Also, I think they, they chase too much on Beast Corp, right? They had no vision to hide on there. So oh. Smart, and they're gonna lose another one. Pike, maybe baiting his support into that fight because the entire of Accord is here. Yeah, this fight and this game is getting tougher for Beast Ghost the later it goes. You're gonna have to deal yeah. with you know, late game Storm Spirit, late game Gyrocop, even late game Huerta. Hell, the Tusk with like Blink Ags is gonna be insane to deal with. Where's I think Monkey King scales well? Oh, that's a dead line again. Oh, Ooh, well, Misho taken well, down, yeah. Dream Coil, but that's just a disengaged tool. I mean, Monkey King scales well, but I not would with assume, this build, right? Yeah, not with this build. Like, if you go, you know, the uh, pretty much any other build. <laughs> yeah, I know. It, it scales a lot like, better. You're gonna have to sell this mage layer at some point. You, I mean, I'm surprised that he has as much network as he has, but I think from now on, the Gyrocopter is just plain and simple going to outfarm the Monkey King. Yeah. It's he does have the Sky to keep up, though, which I really like for Pike. Yeah, you're going to need to have a lot of healing reduction because you're going to have to deal later. Oh, obviously, Bloodstone, but there's also going to be the uh, Satanic coming in for the Gyrocopter soon enough. <laughs> And once he's got the satanic, you know, you'll just... Even if you stun lock him, he'll keep on healing, which is such a pain to deal with. And it's two range carries as well, right? The two range core, so the attack speed reduction, definitely pretty strong against them. Okay, it seems they want to go for Roche on Beast Coast's side. They have a really slow lineup for Roche. Like, incredibly yeah. slow. 
I guess I have the Minos Armor thing, but that's it. That's all I have. Yeah. And you have the Orchid. Ish. Yeah. If you can even that's, pop that's it. Very greedy. Like, their tower, their mid tower is just falling. It's super obvious. I guess it depends on how many Hokori heroes they'll show. They're gonna show the second mid, which probably gives them certainty that they can roll for this. Yeah, they'll continue pushing. The other team is gonna go for the ob objective of Roche. Even if you get the Aegis, like, does it realistically do that much for you? Um, Monkey King dies the once. He's very likely going di to die the twice. Yeah, I think it goes back to like... Uh, you still want to play aggressive with the build and everything that you have, so the Aegis is that tool that gives you certainty that... Or at least more certainty that the fights are going to go in your favor. But as you said, if you misuse this Aegis, if you lose it too early, if you lose a pretty bad fight, Okori can easily get back into this game. They're already in a pretty stable position, I would say. They're not really... I would say they're ahead right now. Even though net worth-wise yeah. they're behind. They, they, like, they've got BKBs done on two of their cores. Uh, Sanking is closing in. With BKB up, there's not enough damage to kill these cores. This jar has a freaking Daedalus. It feels like this lion is dying everywhere, right? He's, he's not really able to sustain himself. Doesn't have the shard. Uh, did end up going for these drums, which I'm not sure I, I agree as well. Just a bit of a weird build. Yeah, it kind of needs the blink to dodge the storm chasing him or to blink on the storm to yeah. insta lock him down. Because that's also the thing. Storm is blowing up this. Uh, like, Lion is the first one to go every fight. He orchids him, boom, dead. Yeah. And then the no fight's so much easier with that lockdown gone. They're not, they're not able, I think, in any of the fights to just jump the storm as he goes for a mission. It feels like, you know, in general, Beast Coast is the one jumping, so the course can't really protect the supports since they're so mobile. The backline kind of ends up uh, unprotected, as they will get this tier 2 at least. Will they? Yeah, they should be able to right-click it twice, take it down. Lemire's not as far ahead as I would have expected at this age, because uh, Lumpy is farming like crazy. He's 8, 1, and 10. His build's not even that aggressive. He's got a Lincoln's defensive, Yule's defensive, Blink statsless, and a Witchblade. Like, he is very... I, their entire lineup is stay alive. Monkey King, his entire build stay alive. Pangolier, yeah, he got the Fusil, but he's also got the Pipe Blink. Um... Glimmer on Batrider, they've got the line with the Solar Crest, they're playing for just defensive tools. If they la outlast the fight, they might be able to win it out. And yeah, that's the weakness of Storm, right? That hero relies on his mana, and his damage is his mana, so... If you can out sustain him, he's oh. generally gonna live as they find Wonder Kid BKB, though. Oh, he's actually going back in to harass a little bit. There's also a tier 3 token still lying on the floor. That monkey king grab. Okay, it's picked up by the line. Who doesn't want to use it because he's got that philosopher's stone and that's free money. <laughs> oh, Jenny. Very lucky the monkey king also got a paladin sword. Probably better tier 3 you could get as that's a dead mortal. Yeah, pops his ulti. We'll do a bit of harassed. Actually, quite a decent amount of damage. But in the end, falters bottom lane. There is no BKB on Wonder Kid, so he has to be careful. They've there would be anyone in the area. Yeah, just the bango. Not that confident. He does have a gem, by the way. Gem pipe. I, I, I gotta say, Illich, to me, even though he has three deaths, honestly, every core in Biscos has been playing really well. Like, incredibly early Diffusal Blade. Relentless aggressive uh, aggression the whole time, and now going back for these defensive items, which further makes the heroes on Biscos unkillable. Lumpy, oh, harass onto the Mier. He's go closing in on the Parasman. That will jump up their damage output a lot in the team with that uh, charred AoE attack. It's such a stupidly good item. And there are not a lot of heroes that go for it. Like, 
Puck goes for it, and I guess Storm. Void OD. Spirit sometimes. OD doesn't get played, so that one doesn't count. <laughs> Core Batrider. That is true. Um, but it also depends on what kind of... Like, I've seen some safe yeah. lane Batriders go for the weirdest builds that make no sense uh, as well. I know, I know. Like, I've just seen that the Hawk Batrider with, like, I got drums. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, there's some games where you see someone and they're like, okay, I'm the only damage dealer in my team. And then they build full defensive. Crimson I mean, guard. Yeah. 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 And then, okay, the, your team's got no chance. Good Good to know. Good to know. Okay. So, the Aegis does expire. Gold lead increase. They got all, all the tiers here. of powers down. Clearing the creeps right now. next to the Pango. At Illich coming in. TP attempt, oh! but Lumiere gets stunned. He has the full Satanic in his courier right now, but he's going to get taken down. Great catch from Illich. If he just waited a little bit longer, he would have no been able buy to get out. Because of that Satanic, 73 seconds. I was going to say, they can't really go high ground because it's too hard. And they killed the fattest hero in Dire. Still isn't easy. You got to be careful of the Sand King, Epi I think you kind of die. It's just that you don't know if there's buyback or not. But I, I think if you just try to poke the tower, you're not really going to do anything. I think you might want to like quickly drop a ward, dive someone, get a kill. Maybe just force a buyback and, and, and get out. But they they don't even try to go high ground, which might be the right choice. Yeah, they might want to just wait for the next Roche, get that Aegis Plus banner, specifically the banner, so that the Gyrocopter can't, or anyone can, like, insta-clear the creep wave. Because Sand King, that's the done? thing, he just puts down, with that Bloodstone, he puts down the Sandstorm and just stands all the way at the back, and yeah. they can't do anything. He cleans up he the He has a Craggy Cold now. Very thank you, boy. We'll finish a Lotus Orb and buy the Plate Mail. Pretty much unkillable in Vitaly. Um, I have a curious question for you. Very important. Okay. Do you think Mike Tyson's going to win tonight? Uh, so, so, here's the thing. Not a, the biggest J. Cole fan. So, I want Mike Tyson to win. But then I think... Think of the fact that Jake convinced Mike Tyson into this, and I have a feeling he wouldn't fight Mike Tyson if he didn't feel like he was gonna win. So I think Jake Paul's gonna win. I guess is my answer. What do you think? I really hope that Mike Tyson's gonna win. <laughs> <laughs> I think. No, I believe Mike Tyson's gonna win. I be I believe it wholeheartedly. Dude's gotta, you know, Iron Mike. He's gotta. An absolutely like, amazing. What point. if he just dies? Like, what if Jake Paul literally gets murdered? What? Do you or think Jake Paul would ever off? sign up for that? I would assume that they'd have a ref in the arena to help at least. <laughs> well, uh, then you're assuming a ref can stop Mike Tyson, which might not be. Well, the... that's also a very good one. That. The, yeah, uh, he, he, he's a goner. He shall be missed. Um, no. But currently, Roshan, two minutes until it respawns, and this is great for Beast Ghost. Like, yeah. if it was a fast respawn, they would be in trouble. No, they can knock on the high ground, and they're forcing Hokori back. The moment Hokori goes back, Beast Ghost can go for the uh, Rosh. Two towers taking full damage. They even forced the Glyph. Oh, poor Hokori. And they feel yeah. like they're going to get this Rosh, but they're not. Unfortunately, the timing is not completely get it. off. Yeah. Catapult wave bottom as well, so the Glyph killed the Catapult mid, but it's not going to kill the Catapult wave bottom. They did send Genic back, so maybe he'll be able to hold on and make sure that not too much damage gets uh, dealt to the buildings. Well, honestly, he walked back, so he could just TP towards his team if they want to contest Roche, which I would assume Beast Ghost is going to head that direction soon. Yeah, I'm surprised they're still, they're pretty chill here on Beast Coast. Are they waiting for any big items? Monkey has a Crystallis, Puck. Wants a refresher, damn. 
Oh, double Dream Coil. Once he hits level 25 as well, that's going to be a really big one. To Dream Coil yeah. pierces uh, debuff immunity against the triple B, KB. And there's a Shivas on the Lich. So they literally have all of the region reduction items besides Vessel, but that's not an item currently. So Roche will spawn, but... <laughs> Beast Ghost is ready to con what is Beast Ghost doing actually? It's a very interesting move. Well Roche is up, so Oh, Jennick is gonna get lassoed out of the base, taken down. And they're gonna oh. knock on the high ground, but Roche is dead. So they can just TP back to base after Roche dies, and then they uh. got a free Aegis. They're very scared of that fight. I guess they read is that the sentinel is too much of a hassle to care about. So they willingly give the Aegis. I, I wouldn't say they got as much as they would have liked out of this, but... Sure. And they definitely have a plan and they committed to it. Yeah, it's... I mean, all things considered, not that bad. Um... They are still 14k ahead on Beast Ghost, so that, that's a big plus. They, their farm is very solid, but that Aegis, you know, it does a lot more value on a hero like Gyrocopter than it would on a Monkey King. Mm, I guess so. Gyrocopter, now he's he has a second life against the bit Blink Lasso play from Moose. Oh. Speaking of Blink Glass, so Vitaly is going to get dragged back. The BKB not going to get popped in time. And Vitaly, Burrow Strike on the side. Bloodstone trying to heal up. Happy Center being repped. They lose Gardic on the side. And the Aegis also got popped. Lumiere pops everything he's got in the chamber and goes in for Illich, who's trying to roll his way out to victory. Fine. They fought back for this. And yeah, they don't lose anyone on the side of Beast Coast. I'm surprised that the Sand King actually lived, but. They did manage to force out a buyback on Tusk, which is going to delay his blink even more. And also, you forced the Aegis, right? Which I think he lost one. a gem right there. Um, he might have. I know that Bango had one for a long time, but I, I think... Wait, where? Okay, there... Yeah, one one of the ones in the base is from the Pango, and the other one... Uh, is from oh, yeah, they have two gems in base now. Oof. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the jar gets found. Lumiere's BKB is on cooldown. Zip in on the back line from Wonder Kid. Quickly getting rid of the Bat Rider. Silence for on to one, but Lumpy's mm -hmm. in a lot of trouble. Can he get himself out of there? He's going to go for the Invis move. Blink Dagger Blink available, out. but is going to get taken down. That's a big kill for Hokori. And Wonder Kid, no fear whatsoever. Big Zip coming in. He is, by the way, five levels behind the puck on the storm. He overcommitted in that fight, I think. Like, yeah, the, you know that the Gyro doesn't have BKB, but they didn't have the numbers. You had no vision around the area, and that cost them a lot. That puck is very fun. So go for oh, the again. The throw now. Gyro Lumiere, can he get the spells off? He pops B the Satanic, but not the BKB. And that's going to be too dead. Gardic does not have a buyback, and Pike gets a double kill. This that's monkey, he's got the Daedalus now, Scotty. Like, it started off by being big support monkey. He 11, 1, and 12 is his score. Yeah, that's... Pike's the beast, man, and it's really nice to see a carry playing this different old uh, Epi Burrow, yeah. big catch coming in. A lot of Bloodstone healing possibly coming through. Pike gets dragged back, pops the BKB. Illich is going to fall back. And they delay the take here. But especially with Pike not having BKB, pushing further is really not going to work out. Vitaly also yeah, has uh, Lotus, so you have to be careful. It felt like he didn't even need to use it, right? Uh, Maze Layer plus the pipe is so much magic resistance. He has 3k HP, but better safe than sorry. Uh, they probably just want to reset. They have the gold lead, as you said. But I still have this feeling that Hokori, one good fight, you get Rapier plus Aegis on this gyro, and the game could be completely over its head. 
It's uh, this gyro just never managing to survive. I at this point just get a Lincoln, so <laughs> or someone get no, a Lincoln insane. for him. He's going to send in Yasha just trying to withstand the lasso, withstand Moves, the coil. Finds the storm, but the rod holds the storm in place. Gonna get oh, the cast no. off. He needs to pop the BKB. Storm is dead. That's storm. a big kill. 70 seconds. No buyback available right now. They find Jennick for a second. Gyrocopter is in the area. He does have his tools to fight. They get the lockdown stun onto Lumpy, but he's gonna try and phase shift his way out of there. Lumpy to disengage Lumiere is all alone. He's surrounded by enemies. He does have a BKB. He does have a Satanic. Can he disengage? Chase him down. No buyback on anyone. Yeah, the high fives even being thrown out. Lumiere is gonna get jumped here. Satanic heal is it gonna be enough to keep him alive. No, it is not. Pike takes him down. Double kill for the monkey. And that seems to be... Yeah. They have no buybacks on anyone. Is anyone even close? No. Nope. No money. It's gonna be at least Megas, right? They have all three waves pushed up. Oh no. Yeah, the storm I think got picked off a couple of times. I, I really feel like the Sand King didn't really add too much to to the game. Uh, I feel like it was just too costly. The aggression and the lead that Beast Coast got out of those early fights that the Sand King couldn't join. I think it's worth picking this hero. They did a really good job with that uh, Mage Slayer with the pipe. They just nullified the hero completely. You, if you fight in the yeah. Wukong's command, you'll always have the Mage Slayer debuff on you. Um, your damage output is just negligible at that stage. And then you're not healing, right? And even if you were healing, they have uh, they had Corrosion, Scotty, and Shivas. It's just way too much of a hassle here for Vitaly. If you... I feel like if you want to play the same thing, you need to ban the Monkey King first phase. Uh, I think it's way... like, you cannot even flex the hero to the mid lane, because uh, we know that they can play Monkey King both 1 and 2 for Beast Coast. I am a little bit surprised that they... After the Biwax didn't come out, that they didn't just, you know, brute force forward. But it's understandable. These are qualifiers yeah. for ESL Thailand. Who wouldn't want to go to Thailand? I would definitely want to go to Thailand. Seems amazing. Um, I've seen pictures. My sister went there. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. My uh, in-laws also went there. A lot of people I know actually went to Thailand, which is kind of strange. I've that is specific a lot of Thailand. SEA countries, but not Thailand. That's definitely... I went to Manila and, uh, oh my gosh, <laughs> I said a lot, uh, in Malaysia, but I have not gone there. I have I've never been to been the to airport Asia. of Singapore, that's, I guess, that counts. I, I know there's a direct flight to Singapore from Amsterdam, which is a plus, but I've never been to Asia. I have been to Africa, but, you know. Oh, really? Where's yeah. I've there? lived in Uganda for the first seven years of my life, so. Which was very strange, going from that to the Netherlands. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not really the same. Don't oh, you have the on the crack. side? Oh, 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 that's a bad song. Yeah, he was... He, there's no response there. He's just straight up dead. No buyback available either. Did he just buy his eggs in pieces, or...? What is Lumiere doing? Where is the Storm's Courier? Does he have... I'm missing something. I'm missing a courier. Did it die? Uh, there's there's two couriers on the secret shop of the Radiant, but I'm not sure if those are dire raiding couriers. Oh no, Storm's courier died with the rest of the Ags in there. Okay, there's gonna be a jump onto Lumiere. Wukong's is pretty large, and there's Lumiere. Can he even get spells off? Nope. He is done and dusted and vitally just chilling, trying to stay invis on the side. They fall back at Jennick with the ulti onto El Misho. Can't even kill off the lion. Lion's got a heart. Yeah, El Misho has does. a freaking heart just for good measure at the end. GG gets called and it will be Beast Ghost taking game number one with an absolutely outstanding performance. Oh man, what a... This game, luckily enough, the only one that really does overwhelm the TA would be the Alchemist with the attack speed and acid spray and shenanigans uh, to get rid of the refraction charges. But 
I've seen a lot of TA struggle where they get top net worth farm and then, you know, you get spotted anywhere and within a split second you're gone. Yeah, Storm definitely can be that hero. The Storm finds you, the Magnus connects, you're gonna be... There might be an Ags uh, eventually for Illich as well, so it's not an easy game whatsoever. It's really on guard, takes saves, and potentially... Yeah, potentially the dispel from Gardic as well. Well, from behind, looking for oh. a fight here. Janik on the That's other side. That's the tomato level one on moves. Usually, ninety nine percent of the time, you see the satyr, and he started the potato. Yeah, um, that's interesting. Because the other one has the mana burn, which you can always use in mid yeah. now. I mean, obviously the Hellbear technically is stronger, but... And look at his arms. His buff big attack, attack speed buff. If they kill it as well, you know, you get that big 120 attack speed increase for 5 seconds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Alk is not necessarily the best fit for that one, but I do like the concept of, of seeing Chen picking more creeps up, right? If you have a like an Ursa or some Monkey King. I, I can see that could be very valuable. I actually do really hate that fa the fact that Chen, you know, starts off with being able to have creeps instead of you being able to counter ward camps to make sure he doesn't get creeps. Now that's hey, not even so possible camps. anymore. Anyways, oh. right. Amisho, is he going to go for the courier snipe? Oh, no. He's just... I don't even know what he was doing there. <laughs> He's going to TP okay. towards bottom. Okay. Fine. And then, uh, concoction action here for fun. Oh, the potato's already dead. All right. It I wasn't the it. best of creeps. At least uh, he'll steal some boars in the meantime. For a good it was measure. affecting really fast, though, for like four seconds. Yeah, this is just annoying for Vitaly. The moves is just constantly going to be able to yoink the, the boars. And there we have it. Just the, the downside of playing Beastmaster uh, with an earlier pick. He still should be having a great time, especially if the Bat Rider makes some stacks later. Um, I'm curious yeah. to see what kind of build he's going to go for. Because if you go Helm of the Overlord, that one can just be stolen by the Chen when he gets shard. So you're probably looking at drums, but... Are you? I think so. Even looking at the no talisman he's building, I feel like he's probably gonna go for Gems of Slum. Uh, I feel like he he just needs to be the sponge that's gonna tank damage, and you have these two carries, as you said, that will be benefiting from that. So probably eggs into like some sort of aura. Uh, maybe Crimson Guard's not bad. I don't feel like pipes necessarily great for Hokori this game. Yeah, the Crimson Guard would uh, most likely be better. I don't think Pipe is necessarily bad against like Lumpy and Li uh, El Misho. But most of the time, Crimson Guard will just bring you more value against a hero like the Alchemist. Good start for Pipe. Good start for our uh, boy Lumiere as well. So, pretty even game here. Mid lanes also. A little bit of a tie. Slight advantage to the Storm, but I think as time goes on, wonder if it should be. I mean, yeah. Oh, top I lane, Jennick. That rider dropping low. They want to make sure Moose dies in response, but it is first blood for the Alchemist. Okay. Very nice. Start the extra uh, gold. Get first blood. El Misho. Drops bottom to Lumiere, another kill coming in, this time for the opposing core. Yeah, this game is interesting because both of, I think the build-up on the offlaners is really what's going to dictate how the game's played, right? Uh, I talked about the, uh, speaking of offlaners, Vitaly might be dead here, Blood Grenade, full duration concoction. And he's trying to stay alive, but won't be able to disengage. Moose gets that kill, and the stop lane is becoming a little bit rougher uh, by the minute. Counter wards coming out as well from Jennick because their uh, jungle was warded. 
to make sure that these stacks didn't happen. And that's the problem as well with Shen. He can just keep sending creeps towards the triangle to make sure no stacks would happen. True. Nature. Oh, he's actually in a little bit of trouble there on moves. The Chen Five is being next. hunted by Jenik for Pike with the stun. Big damage onto Jenik. The Batrider is actually the one in trouble. He's going to get taken down. Oof. All those stacks and it means nothing. Because he had that magic wand at the ready as well in case it started to really hurt. Alright, that felt like a little bit of a bait. And now Pike's just having the time of his life. And so ring flying out to him, face boots completed. Uh this Beastmaster. I you know, I kinda talked about it. I, I don't think this lane is necessarily that good to the beast, so I think it's just comfort for Vitali, if I can be honest. It does feel very much like a, a comfort kind of a pick. Makes it harder, right? I think if it's yeah. only the out, I mean, they counted the that. Beastmaster with their... Especially the yeah. Chen pickup. Like, Chen and Sh it makes it really hard to do anything with the boars. Mm -hmm. I wonder how many games Moose has of Chen, because... I don't remember him playing it that much. He got this potato. I wonder if he's just like... Yeah. You know, I'll just pick his creeps. i not sure what I'm doing here, but as long as I get his creeps, we should be fine. And... Attack it speed, Aura. Let's go. Fell you. He's hoping for that Hellbear Smasher, but he's very unlucky in his uh, his dice rolls. Yeah. All right. Let's let's check how many games. This alchemist is getting a little bit out of hand, but they are doing a lot of damage to Pike. Moves as well. Both of them forced to pop their magic wands. He actually has way more Chen games than I thought. How much is way more? 29. Oh. That's, that's a fair amount. That's for 29 pro games? Yeah. I mean, it used to be a 4, so I just assumed he wouldn't have that many. But maybe there was like a, a place in time where 4 Chen was popular. I don't know. I mean, some teams just like with the IO yeah. would swap their uh, roles. In towards mid, Lumpy is going to get the kill onto Wonder Kid. That's a big one. DK gets knocked down by the storm. DK not level 6 yet. And with the fact that Pike is just dominating in the top lane the entire time and mid also going well for them, this getting a little bit dangerous. Moose is, in the meantime, very farmed, going for the immediate drums rush. Pike is going Trent on this beast master. Ah, there it is about what he's gonna do because I rarely get to see like even if you're going out of the dome a lot of the times you actually go working boots and you thought you might just be dead here. Yeah he's taking so much physical damage. The Chen, the minus armor as well from the acid spray, it's just too much. The boar's coming in to slow him down. There's the zip from Lumpy. They look for Jenik and it is a big rotation. 3k net with lead here after seven minutes at least the XP rune will be a one-for-one one trade, but currently they need... Uh, I, the way that this alchemist is getting ahead, he's going to have like a 11-minute radiance. I think it's going to be faster, man. I think it's going to be like 10 minutes, probably. Oh, they stopped the TP! Luppy just dies. Yeah, the power hawk. of dive bomb. Yeah, that's the hawk too, right there. Oh, no. <laughs> She's got a podcast. She's actually got a pretty fun podcast. <laughs> yeah, saw. it's good. Jake Paul, right? I think it's what, like no? his network or something. I think oh, yeah, so. it's, his ne it's... it's his network. I was like, yeah. it's <laughs> it, it, not, not like with Jake Paul. That would be very cringe. I, I would probably watch that, actually. I mean, to be fair, the, didn't we all watch Jersey Shore and stuff back in the day? We, we like dumpster fires. Yeah. X on the beach is like on their 15th se se uh, season or something like the world is filled with stupid stuff there's the whole 90 day fiance have you oh have my god one? everything on tlc is horrible yeah it's the and worst beautiful channel. at the same time yeah it, the guy with no neck is ridiculous um i have not seen that 
Oh, uh, he's on like 90 Days Fiance, like multiple times. Um. Okay. And, okay. I thought it was a program called uh, No, no Neck Guy. No, it's a guy that like if you look up TLC, No Neck uh, Guy with No Neck, you'll definitely see him. He's just like okay. every like TLC is such a terrible channel. Like the learning channel, bull, just bull. <laughs> Uh, I am learning a lot. Okay, maybe yes, you're not that paying it, enough attention. I'm learning a lot about what I need to do when I'm 600 pounds. <laughs> yep. Dude, this elk oh. pretty much has his relic, and we're at minute eight. So Pike is is about to explode. In a good uh, still gonna be an eleven minute rate at the end, probably. Ten minutes. Nah. He still needs to get it. Uh okay, I mean yeah, if you're considering the travel time maybe. Yeah. You can always TP though. Technically, yes. But do El you Misha? Oh, El Misha we'll spotted by Lumiere. Find... There's the traps. He's not going to pop the trap because the shadow demon is too far away. And he's actually going to go for a counter. Well, they expected this uh, ward placement, so Elmisha is going to lose that observer. I really like what the Beastmaster was doing top. He was sending the boars to block the small camp. He was blocking the large camp with his own creep, so uh, with his own body. So even though he couldn't actually farm that area, he was making sure to deny it as in the mid lane. Amplified damage room picked up by Wonder Kid. And they're going to eat up the Chen Creeps, but that means he's got more Golems! More value- No, Moose is just going to farm, and Almisha's also got pretty okay farm, but Moose- That's also one of the great things about having, like, a Chen Ench. They can jungle. They can just- Like, your team doesn't need you. Everyone's farming. They're not hunting you, either, which is important. They can't hunt you. Have you seen the Hokori lineup? They're terrible at it. DK's got his blade yeah. now, so it's slightly better, but- and if they just to take a tower, you can actually push the tower yourself, right? So it should, yeah. you have the counterplay to, you know, split do something. Exactly. But they would to be top, so they are very, very interested oh. in killing Pike before that Radiance, which, by the way, uh, he should have it. He technically has it, but he will die. No, so. no, he doesn't have oh, he it dodged yet. It. He dodged the Dragon Tail with his ulti. 11 minutes, he still doesn't have it. 15 gold off. <laughs> oh my god. Actually, he might not even get in in 11 minutes if he dies here. He it's gonna get stunned up this. on the side. Elmisho is gonna get stunned by the DK, and the lion is going to get hunted in the pit. Tries to sidestep Lumiere, vitally gets the kill. It's but Pike. He's smoked up. Illich does have a blink dagger, but they are not gonna take that fight. It's also a beauty that he has a Magnus with max level and power. So you have an Alchemist with Radiance and pretty much Battle Fury in one. Yeah. That's a yeah, lot true. of damage in a team fight. It really is. It really is. And uh, I mean, even Lumpy benefits slightly from it. It's unfortunate that he had that death because now he only has two Galvanized tanks. Let's still fair amount of damage, especially when they're smoked behind him. They don't really take the bait, though. Arcane bottom. Genic still needs his level 6. I mean, that's the, these level 6s are important. Shadow Demon has his. The Chen's got his uh, big healing one as well, but the Finger of Death joined the fun. However, this Bat Rider Lasso is the crucial one to make any plays happen, because uh, then you can get the Blink Dagger DK stun into the Lasso Dragon. That will be enough lockdown to kill, for instance, the Storm Spirit. Yeah, Genic's Pretty far away. Uh, I mean, after all, Beastmaster is farming the triangle, TA is farming everywhere. So, not a lot of space for Genic to get gold. And yeah, BC is going for the eggs as we kind of presumed. Yeah, go. There's going to be a nice catch, Genic taken down. And they will lose the tier 1 tower to boot. Beast goes slowly but surely, just not a lot of kills, but they are just farming faster. It's the nature of their heroes. You have an alchemist, you have a... Like, Magnus could max level and power. That's how safe he felt in his lane. Yeah, I do like Wonder Kid's build though, going again for the Orchid. Uh, it definitely feels like the 
right way to go about the storm, uh, right way to go about the lion even. Kill him every start of the fight. Illich finds himself a little guardic. And we'll be able to secure the kill. May possibly, actually. Guarded getting out of range thanks to the Demonic Purge. They lasso drag in El Misho, the line. RP comes out onto one to get nice pushback from Jenik to make sure he doesn't get caught himself, but Pike is in the area. There's a full lockdown. One kid can't even move on that DK. Taken down. And they will oh, find such a good RP. For one. He RP'd as he turned to the side, so he dragged the dragon like, like 400 range away from the river and just made that perfect. Even gets the skewer back afterwards. Beast Coast, they get the better trade and they probably get a tower. Not sure. Uh, the Chen can just send his creeps to tank everything and then it should falter. There is no yeah, roar, roar, so you don't really fear anything. Demonic Purge is still on cooldown as well. Very true. TA is farmed. We'll actually finish Desolator in like a minute, probably. I wonder if they're going to try and force Roshan. Uh, they do have that, plus the eggs getting done on the Beastmaster. This could be a time they can explore, just uh, take away the Aegis from the Storm, which would be a huge asset for these coasts. And this Storm. Yeah. It's got Kaya. It's going shard BKB. Interesting build. You don't get to see that too. Uh, then afterwards, once Lincoln. So he's just really... This Beast Coast team is just fully focused on surviving, uh, even with the Storm Spirit. I like the Shard pickup early on as well, because you get the Shard effect on the Alchemist, and it's just like pop, pop, pop. Everything's cleaved down. Yeah, I feel like this has been like in the game for so long, but in the last three, four months, Storms definitely learned how how powerful it can be. Maybe there was a, a buff on it as well, but. Regardless, Beast Coast dropping up top lane. They have RP available. And that's going to be an interesting build. Straight up Shiva's Rush for Illich just because of that Beastmaster. Look at those beautiful Hellbear Smashers of Moos. Oh. So Gorgeous. Thick. Drag back and <laughs> Gardic can't even survive the skewer. How okay. does a TA fight into this? Like, he's going for the blink dagger but then you still don't have enough to survive any engagement you know i was happy that i was right but i, I don't like this team <laughs> when i because like as i said i i don't know how to take this fights ever uh the dk was supposed to be hunting the storm right but they don't have a hero to follow the dragonite to enable that killing because they don't have stuns. It's only lasso and it's very awkward for Ganic to get those lassos off. So overall, this Dragonite doesn't serve its purpose, which is kill the storm. And the TA doesn't scale as much. So not only you're not really gaining any ground by killing the storm, you're dragging this game along and I really don't know what the TA is supposed to do. I mean, the big timing right now is Beastmaster has his drums. He's got the Ags done. He's going for the Blink Dagger next. Uh, they're going to have to play around the Beastmaster to make these plays. Yeah, they're going to force Roche, looks like. He is really good at taking Roche, but you're also up against RP uh, and Storm and Alchemist. Like, there's just... They have a lot of good lockdown. They have Vision in the lane. TA is slowly walking to the fight. It's actually a blink on the TA, so that's a big timing. Lumiere just gotta make sure that the blink gets to him before the fight starts. Now yeah, looking for the uh, initial engagement, Pike. Walking in front. He's the one that's uh, gonna be the first point of contention. It's also Batrider is so close to his blink dagger as well. Like the Batrider blink, yeah. you really want that one done right now so that you can actually get these quick catches. It definitely feels that way, and also no working on the Dragonite, so you're working with... Mech delivered to Chen. The Courier oh, just flies right towards him. That's such a hard fight here if you're Bisco, uh, if you're Okori. But they do have the high run at least, they have the position. 
And they're just gonna go into Roche. Yep, they have the Storm Shard and the Chen army, so while they're taking their time, Vitaly still doesn't have Blink, Jennic neither. Moose is gonna get spotted out, Lasso dragged back. Moose has multiple heals, has the drums as well, gets himself back. There's gonna be the stun onto Vitaly, the roar, can he get it? Use the disruption save. Keeps him alive for now. Vitaly doesn't get the roar going because he gets RP skew and drag back. There's the roar finally coming now. Gives him Not max me. drums of slam. He's healing up thanks to the drums, but he will eventually get taken down. However, Pike is left behind. They focus so much on the side that Lumiere had time to clear them up and Vitaly took too long to die. That was... That was a really good fight by Hupori. They, they lessoed the Chen, but they didn't group up for anything. So they, they they allow him to leave the fight, and then they just show the Beastmaster really good save by the Shadow Demon, buying some time. The TA very patient to engage as well. Of course, just played that fight really well. I'm not gonna lie, because the the vision was on the Beastco side. They had more network. They had a lot of timings lacking for Hakori, and yet they kind of just clutched that fight out. I mean, you can really see the big difference in that fight as well. Like, there's barely any damage from Beast Coast. There's zero damage from the Lion. Um, it was it all came from the Alchemist. But then you also have the Shadow Demon. He's got Disseminate max level. He max level Disseminate first. So he just drops that on the Beastmaster. The, the Beastmaster keeps on healing, takes damage, mm -hmm. healing, takes damage. So it just keeps spreading. The Drums of Slam healing him up as well afterwards. And it was also a well really done. bad RP, right? That's an RP on two years, and we're kind of dead. But oh. no. Do they have enough damage to kill off the Beastmaster? Disruption save once again. Oh Can he no. heal himself up? The Roar gets thrown out. Drums of Slot Max going in. Pike is dead. And they'll find three. And that is oh everything. God. These saves. The Roar keeps him alive with the Drums of Slam. Why does anyone go for the Helm of the Overlord build ever? Hey, you know, counts your push. It's it's fine, I think. Uh, but you know, there's definitely kind of a praise of the Overlord right now. I feel like it should be a 50-50, maybe. You know, I think there's games for both. As they cleaned everything, this game was an 8 game only two minutes ago for Beast Coast. Yeah, uh, one fight that went kind of bad. Um, they didn't even see TA in that fight which is the the wildest things because they focus everything on the tankiest hero on yeah. Ogori's side twice in a row yeah obviously you need to kill the Beastmaster before he gets the roar off but Shadow Demon is the one that's killing you like Beastmaster is just living and Shadow Demon's actually the one that's uh, carrying these fights with the disruption and disseminate moves definitely that's, uh, you know, they, they wanted to build the Shivas on the Magnus, but they're kind of delayed. This is not a, like a cheap item by any means. You don't really have a Skyrim hero. So that healing is not something that they can address at the moment. I think the only other way you can deal around that is going eggs on the Magnus and just fishing the Beastmaster, making sure that he's completely out of position. But, uh... He already committed for the Veil, so he has to finish the Shivas now. And the double BKB is coming up on the Radiant side soon as well. TA is... Yeah, triple BKB is almost done on their course. Lumiere spots out Lumpy. There's the shard from Lumiere. I just, that shard is so much value in games against Pucks and Storms. Really, if they get silenced, they die. One bad fight, and the entire game turns on its head. Two bad fights, but yeah, definitely. They're, they're going high ground here. There's still ages on this TA for two minutes. They have a lot of siege with the Desolator and... And the Beastmaster. Beast and yeah. It looks like they're just going to give this up, right? You have a uh, tier two in the mid lane and top lane. I think they're giving this up, which is... I think is actually the sound decision. Uh, maybe fortification comes in time. No, the melee rack should be cleaned up as well. Uh, there are creeps there. Chen did try to cut them, but they couldn't clear them in time. Pike is farming up. He's going for the shard. Uh, AC, El Misho, he's still looking for the blink dagger, but... Yeah, I mean, 
looking at their big team fight, I would have expected it to be a lot more solid, but this Storm, he still only has a Kaya plus Shard. Like, yeah. nothing came up after on... He's closing in on the BKB, at least on Lumpy, but that's just a defensive tool. That doesn't give you more damage in those fights. Yeah, I think that's the problem, right? The Storm is a fine pick, I think, for this game, but... Unlike game one, where you had all of these heroes that could follow the storm and just uh, enable him to get kills, it's not that simple in this game. The lion doesn't have a blink dagger, the Magnus just wants to farm and just like, you know, join a fight to get an RP. By the way, Magnus lost his blade mail, so his Shiva's going to be delayed for two extra minutes, even though he has gold for the recipe. Yeah, I might as well keep a lot the money for buyback. Yeah. A lot of hurdles here for Beast Coast at the moment. At least the ages will expire. Wonder if Kokor is gonna try and force the high ground anyways. And on towards the defensive positions here. You still pushing high ground. There is definitely a threat factor. Big RP plays, unsipped concoction on top, and they can die, but once his BKBs come into play, it's a lot less scary. You also have the disruption save from the Shadow Demon, and even the aggressive catch with the Blink Lasso. Yeah. Look where they're standing. Like, they're super scared of that Blink Lasso. They should be. Oh, Genic is going to get caught, lose his life. Vitaly actually trying to get the Roar off. Pops the BKB, throws the Roar onto the Chen. And this is a Pretty good nice. chance for them. There's no BKB onto Lumiere. Pike doesn't have his ulti. There's the RP drag back going in onto the TA. They blow him up in one fell swoop and Lumiere is dead. Gardic, this one. can he get the TP? No, he cannot. They make it three kills secured. And it all started with a little bit of an oopsie daisy there from the Batrider playing too close. Yeah, I mean, the Magnus clutched that fight out. Finds the bed, gets the skewer off, Beastmaster blinks in, gets stunned by a random center. Really quick fingers on Moose, by the way. And after his first BKB, the fight's kind of over. The TA also didn't disengage fast enough, gets RP'd. So, still a lot of back and forth. Felt like that game was already a chorus, but Beast Coast, they find a way. You definitely found an absolutely big way back in towards this game. Now TA is still dead for 20, so they can secure the tier 2 tower in mid. And, uh, yeah. Knocking right forward. 3k net with lead. Genic looking for a catch. Has Blink Lasso. Has Vision with the Observer Ward. Catches Pike, but there's the Insta Hex. The stun on to the bat right as well. Disruption save. They're going to quickly disengage. They know that this is a fight you don't want to take with the storm on the other side of the planet. It is an arcane room though. So they could potentially re-engage. Not a lot of vision. But... Shiva's guard is completed on the Magnus. So he's ready to roll. And then... Yeah, Lincoln Spheres... Those are going to be <laughs> rather crucial, Lincoln Spheres, BKBs. Yeah, speaking both of which, Magnus Pikes. Lumpy going for one. Yeah, Pike as well. They're all going for Lincolns. <laughs> they need a Lotus. I wonder... Maybe Omishu can buy it after his Blink Dagger. And Roche, when will it respawn, is the big question. We'll see in five seconds how long it will take. This could be a deciding fight. One bad Roche fight. 54 then... seconds. Lose this fight, you probably lose Roche. And honestly, if you lose this fight, there's a good chance that the losing team, it's game over. I think if Beast Coast loses the fight, it's like 85% over, maybe a little bit less for Rokori. Uh, they, both sides have a lot of push, which is the, the big threat that I think will happen. Also, having the ages on second life for TA is huge. Yeah, so crucial. Lumiere does have a uh, hard team fight now, so even harder to walk down. 
These pesky traps sip in deep from Lumpy. Spots out, Jenik. Still has that arcane rune, but yeah. needs to regen the mana. Only has five galvanized stacks this game. Jeez. And there's the unstable concoction. Jump in. Spots out, Gardic. Throws out the stun. There's going to be a disruption save on self. The roar gets thrown out onto the Magnus RP. Was used. Can they get the damage in to find any targets? Demonic purge onto Alchemist. And Alchemist, he can't even move. And they're just going to clean yeah. up these two supports as well. Oh, that is Gardic being able to in time disrupt himself right before the RP comes out. And then Demonic Purge is enough to make sure there's nothing coming out from the Shadow Demon. Uh, from the... These RPs have not been good. Like, that's an RP on a dead Shadow Demon and a Dragonite. We kind of talked so much about the fragility of the TA. And the only RP she tanked was that one when you know, she was hitting the barracks. But in general, I feel like there was no rush for them to get that RP off. I, uh, I really think that fights on Illich. Yeah. Um, like, you kill the TA, the fight's over, right? They, they just don't have that much damage. This Dragonite has a BKB and an Arcade. This is not really, like, care Dragonite build. Definitely not. And... Yeah, the game is starting to look significantly harder. Now, for uh, Beast Ghost. They still have, of course, some plays to make. The Blink Lasso... Uh, sorry, the Blink uh, Drag Back with the Skewer. Can still blow up the TA very quickly if he's not careful. This but what does Lumpy now. actually... Uh, yeah, Lumpy's next item is going to be Lincoln's. So it's... Throwing everything on defensives, and they're just lacking. Honestly, they've been lacking damage multiple fights now. Yeah, they like their damage is so low that they need the target prioritization to be perfect, and it really hasn't been like they, they just forced that fight in a really weird way, too. It was nighttime, they didn't have that much vision. Yelk blinked, he actually got lucky, he found a concoction target, or else he would have stunned himself. But even still, like, they are peed the concoction Shadow Demon, <laughs> so just way too much, um, way too many resources for our support. And, uh, right now, TA is going for the MKB, so no evasion uh, from the Alchemist Radiance coming into play. They are pushing out the side lane, though, um... Okay, that was a slightly risky move from uh, Lumpy there with the big zip to cut the creep wave bottom. Yeah. Nice little XP rune there for Elmisha in the meantime. But nonetheless, oh, lasso. lasso drag onto Pike. The Alchemist is dead. Has a buyback. Are they bait? I think they were baiting that on purpose because I don't think he should be the hero. Wow. Uh, oh no. Uh, Illich? Hello? There's going to be a stun coming in onto the DK, trying to get the damage. Finger comes out. They saved the wrong one. Wonderkin's dead. TA is still alive, but he does have the Aegis anyway, and Lumiere's just going to get mowed down by Pike. That's uh, uh, first life. They still have RP, by the way, so I don't think he's getting out. Yeah, no, he's a goner. And this is what you get, like, if you don't Demonic Purge the Alchemist, he gets a free time to smash away at his opponents. Yeah, he is one buyback that Beast Coast committed, but I, I am fairly certain they were baiting that Elk because Hokori just got a bit too cocky. They died for the Magnus once the skewer misses. They didn't have to do anything. They could have just keep hitting the barracks, and that one move uh, was perfectly utilized here by Beast Coast. Now they're going high ground, and they have RP, and there's no buy on this TA. So, can they might be able to equalize the later barracks here. Yeah, they've got solid push behind them as well with the Chen. Uh, he's got the Vlads, he's got the drums. Guarding Greaves and his army, of course, of creeps with all the auras. Lincoln's done on Storm as well, so much harder to walk down. I think Storm was the one that dealt the most damage in that previous fight of everyone. That's crazy. I mean, that shard, right? It's just enables using so much damage. Okay, they get the barracks. Are they oh, gonna pay the price? Trying to go in. Bit of a misplay there. Exactly. They lose the battle rider. And Genix falls. Oh, 
they counterplayed each other hard. <laughs> the target <laughs> that Jenik wanted to lasso got disrupted. Oh, that's a communication issue right there. This game is so back and forth. Okori, one inch away for from getting this game number two, which they are desperately uh, thirsty for. But when he actually comes to those high ground scenarios, they're, they're getting a bit sloppy. It, it's by all stretch of the imagination not easy to push the high ground here. Like, without a shadow of a doubt, it's pretty hard. But regardless, these engagements are getting a. Like, Okori are making too many mistakes on the high ground. Yeah, especially considering how how big of a lead they had amassed up to that point. Now we're pretty much back to square zero here. And yeah, I don't know, TA is not a, like better than in the past. TA can still like play the late game, but in an ideal TA game, you still want to win relatively early, right? You want to win with second ages. And now we're approaching the scenario where we are definitely maybe past the ace prime. Uh, she will actually get an amplify damage plus an MKB. This might be a smoke time here for Okori. Yeah, one big catch, a kale onto Pike, and that could. Oh, he actually has an axe. Is he gonna give the axe to Storm? Oh, he does. Gifted Ooh. axe to Storm. This is That's this is huge. this is a big surprise. This could be. A, and that's everything. a smoke with no dragon farm on the DK. So yes, they have the amplify damage. But Dragon yeah. Force pretty much ending now. Amplify damage onto TA. They blink in onto the high ground. Jennings gonna be so Oh spotted. no! Really? A time a pause like oh, Gardic's like, oh, who no. am I gonna save here? Oh, this that's... is such a painful pause. Oh my god. So wait, uh, who got hit by the RP here? Is the bat plus the TA? Uh, it's the bat plus TA caught inside the RP. There is fight to lead on one side. They saw uh, this fight could either go really good for them or really bad in a split second. Oh my god. Okay, so the DK has no dragon form. The Vitali actually blinked to the wrong side. There's nothing there. Oh, he has no. to walk right in. Janik Batrider is already dead. They spot out the DK. That he's going to be disrupted, but Gardic's going to get taken down. The road gets thrown out. Illich drags them all together. They're taking a lot he of damage, but yeah, he can't fight. Magnus is going to stay alive. Wonderkid with the PKB trying to disengage vitally. Your drums of slam ain't going to do diddly squat. Control back, drag back by Lumpy. Wonderkid's all alone. Oh, no. And that is going to be a full on team wipe double buyback from the supports as well coming out from hokori and just in the blink of one pause it, it looks out you know honesty that fight already looked bad for hokori before the pause but it, it, it definitely doesn't help right because like they're going they don't have dragon form they're going from the low ground to high ground during night time in a place they have no vision, with these goals perfectly positioned, it's just unfortunate. Oh yeah, without a doubt, they were already in a rough spot, but it gives us extra time for the opponents. Yeah. To like, okay, they probably, you know, had vision. I don't know exactly. Yeah, they had an observer ward, so they saw the uh, Shadow Demon. They were like, okay, Shadow yeah. Demon's there, jump him, uh, and then the saves are gone. And the team jumps with the Shadow Demon being secured, gets RP, and it's just like, once that happened, it was already really bad, and it looks like they're not gonna bleed any barracks. But, uh, damage is done. Beast goes 15k gold ahead. They don't get much more out of it so far. They're looking to possibly get Roast here to bottom is still standing, so they couldn't get Megas regardless. But uh, net worth, I mean, 17k at this point. It's okay. It's 36 minutes. It's actually it's quite decent. Like Moose is a full um, core at the moment on the Chen. It's still a Chen, but yeah, you know, he's he's very very fat. He's also I got guess the it defense. It's still a 25 percent uh, win for ability here according to Dota Plus. So he's he's got the time warp creep, the ancient frostbitten O Golem. 14 percent AOE cooldown reduction. For, for Storm, for instance, the, the Electric Vortex cooldown, it drops it from 14 to 12 seconds. Yeah, I mean, Illich is pretty happy about that as well. Even 
it's it's for all abilities, right? So even BKBs, yeah. it'll get shorter. Feels great. Uh, it's I, I think it's all, everything. Yeah. So pretty long Roche spawn timer here. Looks like Beast Coast is gonna position a little bit aggressively, but I think it's hard for Hokori to try and contest this third Roche. And their high ground defense is fine, right? You have less so, but that's about it. Yeah, uh, the creeps are pushing in, so they're trying to force Hokori back to their base, which, uh, I mean, they're gonna lose a set of racks. They can't get Megas because uh, of the two on bottom. Oh, wait, zip in aggressively. That might be a little bit too much, Lumpy, and the rest need to disengage. Roche is up in 50 seconds. They did force Dragon Form. I guess that was Narkin Rune, Dark Dragon Form, so it's not gonna punish Wonder Kid that much, but... They, they're gonna have all the advantage in the world here to defend this Roshan. Especially buyback. So I'm gonna check how that's looking. They have one on Mag, Lion, and Storm. So overall, Beast Coast has everything they need to seize this game. That's third Rosh. Free Ags. Even though they already had given Ags to Storm, you know, you gave uh, free Ags to Magnus, Magnus. Horn Toss. Yeah. That that's nuts. The Chen with the uh Actually, no, I'm confused. No, never mind. I was <laughs> thinking it was still the old one with the strong dispel, yeah, we... but that's, that's his level that's 25. That's level 25. Yeah. Well, what the hell so does the new one do? <laughs> it's like you sacrifice a creep and it it heals someone at my uh, level. I... Kind of God. It's so weird. It's I, I, I don't like it. I mean, the a global HP region R is pretty nice. Yeah, uh, does it work on, on lane creeps? All sure allied what. units, so that has to also be lane creeps. Yeah, damn. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. Can you imagine you have like light and shard and and that that's like unpushable lanes? I still one of the fe best things I've ever seen is the lichen with ags biting a Chen. <laughs> and then you have like the Chen army pushing at the enemies. So that's like. Without a doubt, one of the craziest uh, things you can still do in Dota. Or the uh, Chen Penitence with the Witch Doctor's ult. And then you just oh, see yeah, that's <laughs> nice. <laughs> that is nice. I, I think it was like 140 attack speed at some point. It was. Uh, I remember Penitence being crazy strong when they changed it. Because but... it used to be like Damage Amp, right? Or something. Well, damage amp, I think. I don't know. I don't play Chen. I don't. I don't touch the arrow. I just see some weird highlights on Twitter and uh, and uh, these days, what Sky Blue? I think that's the new social media. All the cool kids are going to Blue Sky. Blue Sky. Other way around. I don't think anyone went to Threads. Actually, it took a long time for it to be available in the actually. Room. Surprisingly, have a Threads account. I know I I never used it, and I don't have a Blue Sky one. I I, I never thought it was actually gonna work, but I've seen a lot. Of, there's like a fair amount of people using it nowadays. Yeah, it's because of the whole Elon Musk stuff. Elon <laughs> Musk. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I I almost did go to Blue Sky because we literally couldn't use it on Brazil. It was banned. What, Blue Sky or X? Because uh, I know X was X. banned. Yeah, it was banned on Brazil. Zip, zip, zip. Lumpy, most of his mana gone, but he has the ages anyway. So many He's going creeps. for Prasma next. Getting the Tower of Storm illusions here. A banner drop to make sure the Siege Creeps stay alive. That's There's so the Dragon Account for the Alchemist. That's a good lasso. Can they keep him alive? The roar gets thrown out. Lumpy is still pumping out the damage. So Lumpy is the damage dealer here. That storm does so much. Two kills get secured. No buyback on the two supports. Lumpy to get back. Buyback from Pike. They know they want to finish the game right here, right now. Yeah, he's coming through the twin gates. The oh. banner's still up, so they can't really Lion deal given with this mana. Game. Always nice. Yep. I'm sure doesn't have shard. That's, That's a bit disappointing this far in the game. That's the reverse hop to a right there. And that's uh, Leonard Barracks. They didn't even need the out buyback. It's actually not the reverse, it's the spit on that thing. <laughs> it's the combo right there. <laughs> Pike misses oh. the 
meant to dodge, but the push power is very solid. They don't have the roar. DK needs to be careful. His Elder Dragon form is about to end as well. They have to defend. There's no. They have a fortification. Hex onto the TA. But their focus is the Ancient, drag back, surrounding the DK, Wonder Kid's dead, no buyback available, Lumiere's gonna get controlled up, and the TA falters. With only Vitaly left of standing, going in for the Roar One Man Army, can he do anything? Nope, the answer is definitely a zero RP pump fake, finish it off, Ancient drops, and East Coast make it a 2-0. Yeah, this game was Ooh, very close from going all three games. Uh, I